The SpaceX Raptor engine has established itself as the undisputed champion among rocket engines. Despite the explosion of both stages of the Starship vehicle after separation, SpaceX marked the test flight as a significant milestone. All 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy boosters successfully ignited and, for the first time, completed a full-duration burn during Zen. In a mission update, SpaceX stated, The Raptor engine is a marvel of engineering, utilizing methane as fuel and a full-flow staged combustion cycle that is exceptionally challenging to master. No other engine of this kind has ever been airborne. Yet, Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, isn't content. He recently revealed the next-generation Raptor engine boasting more power and efficiency but omitting the heat shield. What implications does this hold for the future of Starship and SpaceX? Elon Musk's recent tweet delving into the SpaceX Raptor engine underscores the significant strides the company has taken in crafting the most advanced engine to date. He expressed enthusiasm for the next-gen Raptor, emphasizing its robust design that eliminates the need for a heat shield. Anticipated enhancements include increased thrust, higher ISP, and various improvements, marking a remarkable achievement. This suggests SpaceX's capability to produce more than one Raptor engine per day, a noteworthy feat considering Musk's previous frustration over the slower Raptor development pace two years ago. Reflecting on a critical moment, Musk highlighted a potential bankruptcy risk due to a Raptor production crisis a year ago. The situation seemed dire, with Musk emphasizing the need for achieving a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks to avert financial peril. However, SpaceX successfully overcame this challenge, delivering not only in terms of quality, but also quantity. The recent Raptor's performance during a flight demonstrated this success. Musk outlined the upcoming Raptor challenge, emphasizing its increased power and simplicity, with a notable goal to eliminate the use of heat shields in the next-gen Raptor. Regarding the Raptor heat shield, Musk detailed the current installation process, explaining the necessity of sheet metal cladding around the engine to protect delicate components such as wiring and plumbing from the intense heat of the exhaust. This shielding, notably observed in the Super Heavy engines, is an intricate system employing stainless steel covers. Musk has particularly discussed this aspect in relation to Booster 9 highlighting the use of black material in specific areas beneath the vehicle, potentially addressing additional heating concerns in those regions. These 13 circular components, arranged around the central engine mounts, are incorporated into Section C within the tents before the stacking process. SpaceX consistently strives to minimize post-stacking tasks. Moving to the outer ring housing 20 engines, specialized panels are installed between each engine. These panels feature a perpendicular dividing wall on their interior face, safeguarding each engine from neighboring engines during high-energy events. The majority of this installation occurs after the engines are in place and is removed before engine extraction, resulting in rarely observing stand-alone engines with shields, let alone fully shielded one. The notable advantage of eliminating these shields lies in enhanced surface capability, coupled with a substantial reduction in rocket weight, the removal of excess sheet metal not only saves weight, but also streamlines maintenance processes, eliminating the need for removal and replacement during engine alert. This improvement is evident in the Raptor 3 version. In May, Musk announced the achievement of 350 bar chamber pressure or 269 tons of thrust for Raptor V3. With the Starship Super Heavy booster boasting 33 Raptors, the total thrust amounts to 8,877 tons, or approximately 19.5 million pounds. Must further asserted that by strategically removing and integrating secondary structures or intricate components, they could locally protect the engine without the need for heat shield. This streamlined approach decreases engine mass, enhances compactness, and accelerates the manufacturing process at scale compared to previous versions. In essence, the SpaceX team's dedication is commendable, characterized by a continuous cycle of learning, upgrading, and record-breaking achievements. In addition to SpaceX's endeavors, there's notable progress in other aerospace initiatives, particularly the Boeing Starline, a spacecraft attempting to overcome its challenges.
NASA confirms that the inaugural crew launch of Boeing's CSD-100 Starliner is set to proceed as planned in mid-April. Phil McAllister, director of NASA's Commercial Space Division, shared updates during a November 20th meeting, emphasizing that the preparations for the crew flight test mission are advancing on schedule, targeting an April 14th launch date. Despite acknowledging the remaining tasks, McAllister expressed confidence in the timeline. Addressing the committee, McAllister mentioned that NASA and Boeing successfully addressed all issues identified during the orbital flight test to OFF-2 in May 2010. Nearly 98% of the certification paperwork required for the crewed flight test CFD, has been completed. The CFD mission is slated to carry NASA astronauts Butch Will Moore and Sonny Williams to the International Space Station for an eight-day stay. Originally scheduled for this year following off to the CFD mission face delays announced in August, pushing the launch to no earlier than March 24. This postponement aimed to address concerns related to flammable tape and wire harnesses within the capsule and the redesign of soft links in the spacecraft parachutes for enhanced safety. McAllister reported the completion of the tape remediation work, with Boeing removing over 1,300 meters of flammable tape. The company adopted measures such as wrapping the remaining tape in non-flammable alternatives or covering it with a non-flammable multi-layer fabric sleeve. Boeing's chief engineer for the Starliner program, Dave McCann, highlighted the collaborative effort between Boeing and NASA in managing risks to ensure the vehicle's safety. Regarding parachutes, McAllister outlined plans for a crucial drop test in January to assess the performance of the redesigned softling. Success in this test is pivotal for maintaining the April 14th launch timeline. McAllister emphasized the significance of completing the crewed flight test, enabling Starliner to engage in regular missions to the International Space Station, alternating with SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a milestone eagerly anticipated by the teams involved. In the pursuit to rival SpaceX, the Chinese launch startup Landscape has unveiled ambitious plans for a reusable stainless steel rocket named ZUU-3, also known as Vermilion Bird 3. The rocket is designed with stainless steel propellant tanks and Tanu methane liquid oxygen propellant rocket engines in clusters. Landscape CEO Shang Chengwu presented the details at the Mengu Lake Aerospace Information Industry International Ecosystem event in Chongqing, China, on November 21. In its expendable state, the two-stage launcher is projected to have a payload capacity of 20 metric tons to lower for it. Recovery of the first stage downrange will enable a payload of 16 half tons to Leo, while landing back at the launch site will offer a capacity of 11 tons to Leo. Renderings of the rocket showcase features such as fins and deployable landing legs on the first stage. This announcement closely followed SpaceX's second Starship Super Heavy launch test. Although crucial details like a tentative test launch date and the rocket's dimensions were not disclosed, it implies that the plan is in the early stages, with numerous challenges anticipated in the development process, particularly related to the weight and properties of steel, encompassing manufacturing and fabrication complexities. Upon operationalization, the ZUU-3 will contend with domestic competition from Space Pioneer, another startup set to launch its Don Long-3 rocket in the coming year, capable of lifting 17 tons to LEO or 14 tons to a 500 km sun-synchronous orbit. Land Space, established in 2015 as one of China's initial commercial launch companies, is responding to developments in the U.S. The firm is gearing up for its third Ju-2 methane liquid oxygen rocket launch on December 4, following a failed attempt in December 22 and a successful orbit-reaching launch in July. Landscape aims to be a major player, being the first to reach orbit with a methalox launcher and the second Chinese commercial firm to reach orbit with a liquid propellant launcher after space pioneers Kui Ju Tong Lan 2 in April. Notably, Landscape isn't the sole Chinese launch firm exploring stainless steel rockets. A newer startup, Space Epic, conducted hot fire tests earlier this year for a planned reusable stainless steel line. Additionally, China's state-owned China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, has outlined plans for the super-heavy lift Long March 9, emphasizing eventual full reusability.